Mom, help me. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Proverbs 4.23 The boy was innocent and good. He was very bright, outgoing, and liked to play sports with his friends. He truly had no problems until he entered elementary school. One day, in his first year of elementary school, he happened to see a picture of a naked woman on the computer with his friends. The picture literally became ingrained in his head. Soon after, he saw something more provocative with his friends. It was also unbearably shocking to him. Since then, the shocking scene never left his mind. As a result, he was not able to do anything right, including studying. He looked completely fine on the outside, but over time, he began to experience an internal struggle that became increasingly intense day by day. He, however, didn't share his struggle with anyone. The feeling of shame and guilt blocked his confession. His teacher told his mother about how he lacked concentration, but his mother was not too concerned because she thought it was just because he was young. Three years passed by. One day, the boy came back from school and cried over his low exam score. Surprised, the mother asked him why he was crying, but the boy only wailed like a madman. She had never seen her son cry so hard like this. He struggled and cried his heart out. He pleaded with his mother, Mom, please help me. I can't study. I'm about to go crazy. Help me. Even more surprised, she asked him, How do you want me to help you? Stay at home and be with me. She was shocked. She had been at her current job since before she got married. Her son was telling her to quit what she had expected would be a lifetime job. When she thought about having to stay at home, a great debate rose in her mind. However, she could feel that he was desperate for her help. The child kept pleading for help. She debated between her son and her work. She began to think that she might later regret and weep bitter tears if she didn't give him what he wanted. After days of contemplation, she quit her job. Even with her tough decision to stay with her son, the obscene thoughts didn't disappear. That was a problem. She knew very well that man cannot control another man's thoughts. I offered to teach her the key to how a person can control their thoughts. With full interest and curiosity, she sat closer to me and asked, How can you control your thoughts? Is that even possible? Really? Of course it is. That's why you believe in Jesus. Because we can have the power to control our minds and rule our feelings. Otherwise, why would we believe in Him? It's about being redeemed from sin. I can promise you, thoughts can be controlled. The mother dropped everything and began to study the Bible with me. When an unwanted thought comes into your mind, Firmly decide to not allow it in your mind and call upon Jesus. The moment your decision is confirmed, the heavenly power comes into your mind and blocks out the thought. Man cannot create his own thoughts. That's why thoughts from the two gods come into man's mind. The act of blocking the thoughts of the god of the world, Satan, is called guarding one's mind. You must guard your mind, for everything you do flows from it. Unfortunately, people don't know the way to guard their minds. They are fooled to think that they are the generators of their own thoughts. Satan has inserted his thoughts into your son's mind, and he couldn't bear or handle those thoughts and thus ended up in mental anguish. Now, you know the way to solve the problem. You should try and experience it first, and then teach it to him. That very day, 
The mother began to read the Bible and the child guidance by Ellen G. White. A personal experience. There is no clearer education than that. The mother studied the state of her own mind to find out that there are always two contradicting thoughts in her mind. She could now clearly see that she was not the one who generated her thoughts. She felt hopeful that she now had the power to make a choice. Finally, she experienced the victory in the self-battle by practicing what she had learned to make a firm decision and call upon Jesus. She could now share her personal testimony with her son. The boy was all ears as she began to tell her story. She was extremely thankful to be able to teach him the way to guard his mind. Let me tell you what he has done for me. Psalm 66, 16 A careful listener will testify successfully. Proverbs 21, 28